10 things you need to know before visiting the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. All right, today we're taking a tour of the 1800 acre Safari Park. I'll get as much footage as I can of as many animals as possible. And as we walk through the park, I'll share the top 10 tips we found and also information about animals and exhibits. At 1800 acres, the park is pretty large with plenty of trails, but you can cover it all in one day. One of the first things I'd recommend is riding the Africa Tram. This is a 25 minute tour that travels around a large open area called the African Plains. This area is only accessible by tram or safari. And on the tour, you'll get to see a variety of wildlife all living together. There's a wide range of animals and so many wonderful exhibits to explore. And by the end of the video, you'll know exactly what to expect visiting the safari park. Tip number one, arrive early. Many of these animals are very energetic in the mornings and arriving early will help you see as many of these wonderful animals as possible. Parking is much easier early in the day as well. A side note, there's a $15 parking fee, so be prepared for that. Tip number two, check the weather forecast. Bring sunscreen, a hat, and good walking shoes. Some areas of the park are not shaded, so it can be useful to have some sun protection. Also, it can get pretty warm here in Escondido, depending on the time of year. Tip number three, download the Safari Park app and pick up a map at the front entrance. There are a lot of trails in the park and it helps to know what you'd like to see in advance. You'll find hidden gems all over the park, such as Tiger Trail, Condor Ridge, the Botanical Gardens, and much more. The app also has information about scheduled trainer talks, wildlife presentations, and seasonal exhibits such as the spring butterfly jungle and the summer safari. Tip number four, if you want to go on one of these special safaris or activities, the park offers a number of paid experiences. These include the Flightline Zipline, which is a two-third mile long zipline that travels 50 miles per hour, 130 feet above the rhinos and giraffes and other wildlife. There's also the Balloon Safari, which is a 12-minute helium balloon ride that rises 400 feet above the park. There are safari tours where a personal tour guide will take you around the park and up-close encounters where you can meet and feed animals in person. One of the coolest things is that you can even camp overnight at the Roar and Snore Safari. Booking information can be found on the site and I'll put a link in the description below. Tip number five, bring snacks and water. The park has many great dining options, but if you prefer to pack your own picnic lunch, there are tables and areas all around the park where you can sit and enjoy a picnic lunch with your family. Tip number six, the cheetah run. This unique exhibit takes place once a day. Here you'll be able to see a cheetah running at full speed. You can look online or ask a park volunteer for times. You'll often see volunteers around the park wearing red shirts. Tip number seven, unique animals. The safari park is home to unique exhibits and animals that you can't find anywhere else. Walkabout Australia is known for wallabies, kangaroos, and it's the only place you can see a platypus outside of Australia. Tip number eight, the safari park is a place for people who love gardens and plant life. The park features botanical gardens with endangered plant species, a bonsai pavilion, Baja garden, and old world succulent garden. Tip number nine, there's plenty of entertainment and fun for the kids, including a petting area where you can pet goats and sheep, a splash zone, which is a great way to escape the summer heat, and there are also kids play areas all over the park. The conservation carousel, which is at the front of the park, offers unlimited rides all day for $6. Tip number 10, your visit is important and actually supports the preservation of endangered species. The San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance is a nonprofit organization that runs the San Diego Zoo and the Safari Park. They combine animal care, research, and education to support conservation strategies for endangered species. This is a very important park and your visit helps to protect these wonderful animals. If you're enjoying the video so far, hit the like button. It's the best way to support the channel. Also, we have new videos coming, so subscribe so you don't miss out. The Safari Park is an African-themed park that's located 44 minutes north of downtown San Diego. 
Opening in 1972, it was designed to serve as a breeding and research center where animals could be viewed in their natural habitat. The park has been instrumental in the preservation of endangered animals. The breeding facility averages one new birth per day. One example of success is the California condor, which was on the brink of extinction with only 27 birds remaining in the wild. But thanks to the efforts of the park and its supporters, condor numbers have risen and they've since been reintroduced into the wild. There are almost 3,000 animals living at the park. You'll often see the endangered species symbol at many of the exhibits. Now let's take a tour and introduce some of the animals. This is the macaw and they live in Brazil. They're the largest of all parrots and the adults measure up to 40 inches from head to tail. Sumatran tigers come from Indonesia and Sumatra. They're estimated to be 400 to 700 tigers left in the wild. These tigers require a large continuous area of forest to survive and their native habitat has been affected by deforestation to make way for palm oil farms. Right next to the Sumatran tiger exhibit, there's a nice waterfall. This reminds me of the waterfall at the San Diego Zoo. And you can see the natural habitat here at the Safari Park. The park was built into this canyon called the San Pasquale Valley. That's the wingspan of a California condor. The northern bald eagle can be found throughout North America. They can dive close to 100 miles per hour to catch fish. The bald eagle is the national bird of the United States and can be found on the presidential seal and U.S. federal agency logos. And up there on the top of that branch is the toco toucan from South America. We're here on the northern end of the park looking down southeast towards the savanna habitat. And later on, we'll take the tram, which will take us around the perimeter of this area all around out there. Desert bighorn sheep are native to the Southwest United States. They're adapted to go for long stretches without water. They can weigh up to 280 pounds and climb steep, rocky terrain with speed and agility. At the northern edge of the park, you'll find the Old World Succulent Garden and the Baja Garden. According to the Safari Park site, these gardens represent a wide variety of species with fleshy water storing leaves. The collection includes elephant trees, boojums, and cacti. This is the largest collection of these plants outside of their native habitat. With an astounding array of adaptations, these plants are true survivors, thriving in the most inhospitable of environments. At the north side of Walkabout, Australia, you'll find a gift shop, a refreshment bar, and a very interesting bird. The southern cassowary is a flightless bird that comes from New Guinea. They're the third largest bird behind the ostrich and the emu. Although they're afraid of humans, they're capable of attacking and have a reputation for being the world's most dangerous bird. Their middle toe is long and sharp and capable of inflicting serious harm. Right next door is the Bonsai Pavilion. Bonsai is a combination of two Japanese words meaning tree in tray. Measured in inches rather than feet, these tiny trees are carefully cultivated to resemble larger trees in real life scenery. Bonsai trees are grown in small containers and require specialized cultivation and care techniques to support their long-term growth and maintenance. The platypus, also referred to as duck-billed platypus, is a semi-aquatic egg-laying mammal from eastern Australia. It senses prey by electrolocation and it's one of the few venomous mammals. Male platypuses possess venom-producing spurs on their hind feet, able to cause severe pain in humans. Wallabies come from Australia and New Guinea. They're part of the marsupial family and they're related to kangaroos. Marsupials are known to carry their young in a pouch. Wallabies can grow up to 41 inches tall. They're herbivores and they prefer to eat grass, vegetables, and leaves. The western gray kangaroo is also part of the marsupial family. They're one of the largest of the kangaroo family, weighing up to 120 pounds and standing about four feet tall. They live in groups of up to 15 members and the males have boxing contests to win the favor of females during the breeding season. 
Mountain Cody are from South America. They're fierce when provoked, with strong jaws, sharp canine teeth, and fast claws. Chilean flamingos. They live in the coastal lagoons and mudflats of South America. They're known for their long legs, which helps them wade in the water. The leg joint in the middle is its ankle, not its knee. The Mombasa Lagoon is home to over 20 species of birds. At the north end is the African fishing village structure. At the southern end of the lagoon is an area where guests can reserve a spot for their wedding ceremony. The western gorilla is a great ape from Africa and it's known for its light colored fur. They can weigh up to 370 pounds at a height of 5 foot 9 inches. They live in groups of up to 20 gorillas with one dominant male, several females and their offspring which they care for for the first 3 to 4 years of their lives. Gorillas are considered highly intelligent. Some in captivity have been taught a form of sign language. They develop strong family bonds, use tools, laugh, and even think about the past and the future. Gorillas are an endangered species with approximately 50,000 remaining in the wild. African elephants come from Central Africa. You can recognize an African elephant by their large ears that some say resembles the continent Africa. Like apes and whales, they possess a high level of self-awareness and intelligence. Some in captivity have learned to use a paintbrush to create art. They're playful with a sense of humor, and they learn quickly and show great compassion and care for one another. They're even able to memorize and use tools to solve complex problems. From this vantage point, you can see just how big the savanna portion of the safari park is. And it's really only accessible by safari or the Africa tram ride. From here, you can see a little baby rhino, and perhaps mom and dad close by. Just over the top of that hill by those palm trees is another area which we'll go to very soon on the African tram. The Africa Tram is a 23 minute tour that takes you around the savanna habitat. There was once a monorail tour that traveled around the park. Due to high maintenance costs, the tram replaced the monorail, and the tram is a biofueled wheeled tram that carries around 100 passengers. The tram ride travels around the African Plains portion of the park, and there are plans to expand the tour to cover the Asian savanna and many new exhibits. This area of the park is about 240 acres and there are many different animals that coexist in the same areas. Along the way, you'll see giraffe, rhino, cattle, cape buffalo, deer, blesbok, orcs, gazelle, antelope, impala, vultures, and much more. And the tour guides do a wonderful job of sharing interesting facts and information about each animal. The savanna habitat serves as a sanctuary for animals to give birth and raise their young ones. And on this tour you'll learn about the history of the park and the great efforts of the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance to help preserve and support endangered animal species. If you'd like to help this cause, you can visit the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance.org. On the site, you can find information about their worldwide conservation efforts and useful resources. You can even become a volunteer or donate to conservation efforts. African lions can grow up to six and a half feet long and weigh up to 490 pounds. Lions sleep and rest for about 21 hours per day. They live in prides of up to 15 members and the female lions accomplish most of the hunting. This area of the park is called the African Outpost. This is a great area to take an afternoon walk as there is a trail that leads across a wooden planked walkway around the lagoon. And just on the other side is the warthog, which are pigs who live in open habitats with tusks that can grow from 10 to 25 inches long. The okapi is also known as a zebra giraffe. They have an increased amount of rod cells giving them the ability to see in the dark. Continuing along the trail leads to the African woods section of the park. Along the way, you'll see vultures, antelope, orcs, 
and Gazelle. The path leads to an elevator and from the top you'll have an amazing view of the savanna portion of the park from above. The trail then leads through a rainforest to Mombasa Lagoon and Nairobi Village. In this part of the park you'll find food and snack stands, trainer talks and shows as well as animals living in the village and close to the lagoon. And from the village it's not too far to these amazing light displays that make for a great photo opportunity. If you enjoyed the video hit the like button, it's the best way to support the channel. Also we have new videos coming so subscribe so you don't miss out. Now click here for a tour of the San Diego Zoo and SeaWorld.